Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and we're back onto the subject of digital electronics this time with a look at uh, three different chips that have got some gates in which are a little bit different to the normal uh, run-of-the-mill gates so hopefully you'll find that interesting and they probably also qualify as vintage gates since at least one of the chips was made in the, the very end of the 1970s the other ones were made uh, in the early 80s so I hope it'll uh, be useful to you uh, and let's start by having a look at the theory of the first two gates we're going to be exploring. One of the things that's characterised our previous looks at logic gates and here's a, a selection of them is that they've either had as per the top line two inputs or as per the bottom line one input and I've sim simply put the two types of NOT gate there one being the conventional inverter on the left and the other being the Schmidt trigger version on the right but essentially they uh, they are the same gate that uh, that does the same job and it is indeed possible to get Schmidt trigger versions of some of the two input gates now they're usually uh, fairly easy to understand but there are other gates as well um, and I've got a, a selection of them lying about in my bits box so I thought we'd have a closer look at, um, at some of them today so the first two then are going to be the 74LS10 and 74LS11 now the LS10 is a three input NAND gate so uh, it's a little bit different in that it's got three inputs instead of one which makes the truth table slightly more complicated um, but the uh, output hopefully is pretty much the same in the case of a NAND gate uh, if all the inputs are high then the output will be low and in any other condition the, out the output is high so that's fairly easy to understand and the 74 LS10 has got three of those three input uh, NAND gates on each chip arranged uh, like so. Uh, the 74 LS11 uh, is very similar except it's an AND as opposed to a NAND gate so it has the symbol that's missing the little inversion circle there and the tru truth table essentially is the opposite. Um, the output is low under any condition except when all the inputs are high in which case the output is high so it is understandably it's uh, the opposite of and uh, of an and so um, a not and if you like and the uh, components uh, are arranged on the chip in a, a similar fashion so we're going to make use of that uh, bottom gate on pins three to six on both versions which saves me uh, duplicating a circuit so let's go and have a look at those two on the breadboard Okay then here's the 74LS11 um, so that's the AND gate uh, and got a very simple arrangement on the board here so I can use this arrangement for both the, the 11 and the 10 um, so we've got the three inputs currently all tied low here with with uh, 1k resistors just pulling down the three inputs and then I've got the output there with a current limiting resistor and just an LED um, so if the output's high the LED will light if it's low it won't so currently the output is low power is on um, and we've got all three inputs low so I would expect that um, to be the for the output to be low if you remember the truth table we've got the only condition where the output is high is if all three outputs are high so let's uh, just take some jumpers let's take first input high there shouldn't make any difference second input let's make that one high and finally third input there let's take that high and uh, hopefully you can see the LED is immediately uh, lit so if I just remove the second one yeah that should turn it off so that's the confirmation of, uh, of the AND gate function uh, working correctly with the three inputs Ok so by the miracle of filmmaking I've now swapped the 74LS11 for a 74LS10 this uh, definitely qualifies as the vintage chip today it was manufactured uh, September 79 um, a very different world it was indeed uh, those, those 40 odd years ago um, however it's still working and I've left the three jumpers in position from the AND gate and the AND gate of course with all three inputs I should have given a high output this is the um, triple input NAND gate and I would expect with all inputs high for the output to be low which indeed is the case and if I take any of these off 
straight away you'll see the input um, goes high take away another one there yeah, output remains high and as you can see it is indeed uh, doing exactly what you'd expect a NAND gate to do and that is when all three inputs are low as they're being pulled down by the resistors then the output is high and then taking the in inputs um, high turns off the output so that's the uh, 74 LS10 from 1979 and finally the last chip we're going to look at is the 74LS51 um, which is certainly a little bit different to just conventional gates and it consists of um, here's a bit of the Fairchild data sheet for you from the mid 80s it consists of a, a pair of two input AND gates on the bottom there feeding a NOR gate uh, with its output on Y2 on pin 6 and then above that two three input AND gates feeding yet another NOR, a NOR gate with its output uh, uh, there on uh, on pin 8 or, or Y1 as it's called so uh, that's a little bit interesting so let's look what that means in terms of truth table we'll stick with the easier of the two there we'll stick with the lower gate so we've got two AND gates um, there's the truth table just to remind you of the AND gate and then uh, next to that we've got the NOR gate which I've marked as Y there to keep with the naming convention on the on the Fairchild data sheet uh, and there's the uh, NOR gates uh, truth table so the output is going to be a, a mixture of those two now let's have a look um, um, see if we can find the application for that and actually I didn't have to look uh, too far here is uh, a little section of the BBC microcomputers circuit diagram um, BBC micro was an 8-bit uh, 6502 based computer from the 1980s that uh, some of you may be familiar with I had one for many years was very pleased with it did all sorts with it and sort of lower right hand side there you can see IC28 is indeed a 74LS51 and we've got the pair of AND gates there being fed from various parts of the circuit and the NOR gate toddling off there uh, to another bit of the circuit uh, just off screen uh, so then I started looking for the other half of the chip wondering if that was being used and indeed it is it's actually on the same page quite close top left hand side there you can see the two three input AND gates uh, feeding the NOR gate and interestingly what they've got the lower gate all three inputs are connected to ground which makes the output of that lower AND gate permanently low so what you've effectively got there is a three input NAND gate because all the OR gate will do is invert the output of the AND gate so they clearly wanted a three input NAND so they just made use of the rest of that chip which is probably good practice because uh, you wouldn't want um, inputs and outputs floating about if you weren't using them right, let's go and look at the chip uh, in practice okay so not terribly easy to see but here's the 74 LS 51 uh, the output of the two input gate section of the chip I've got attached through a current limiter and resistor to an LED doing the usual um, logic state display so currently it's low as the LED is not lit now I've got both of the input AND gates uh, currently tied low um, and so you're going to end up uh, with both sides of that uh, that third OR gate uh, also low um, and that means in the case of all that the output will also be low and any any other state should now set it high so if I take one of the inputs high on one of the AND gates straight away we've now got the uh, output has gone has gone high and just out of interest here if ever you're uh, wondering about the value of pull-up resistors really nice example here uh, if I go back low there again uh, hopefully you can see the brightness of the LED if I take the lead out to move it high before I actually plug it anywhere you can actually see the LED is already lit and if I now take it high it does get brighter but when the input is floating um, you can see there is also sort, sort of uh, a semi-high state going on and this is um, pointing out the importance of either tying inputs low or high um, so on that uh, example on the BBC Micro whether they'd used the other half of the gate or not they would have need to have um, tied the inputs uh, either high or low to uh, um, 
does reduce the amount of uh, noise on the board. So that confirms the uh, operation of the uh, three gate section as per the truth table as you saw on the slide just now. Let's just reset up and see if we can quickly uh, recreate the situation that we saw uh, on the BBC micro board. Okay, I appreciate there's a lot uh, going on here with all these jumpers. The three green jumpers are pulling the three inputs of one of the three input AND gates down to low. And these uh, red and orange jumpers here are on the uh, second three input gate. And uh, currently I've got them all uh, uh, attached to the positive rail, so they're pulling it high. So I've got one gate pull low, that's the green jumpers exactly as per the BBC micro circuit and I've, remo I've moved the output LED to indicate what's going on on, on that pin there which, which is the output of the second gate. So if I take any of these uh, gates uh, inputs low instead of high we ought to see the NAND function occurring so I'll take two high there, two low there and I'll take that one low there as well so yeah we've definitely got uh, what effectively amounts to NAND going on there uh, which is uh, an AND followed by an OR because this uh, gate here which is tied low is permanently set one side of the NOR gate to, to zero um, so it's only this one that's doing the trick so that little bit of BBC microcircuitry does effectively uh, emulate a NAND gate. Okay well that's a look at the 74LS 10, 11 and 51. Uh, hopefully you've found it uh, interesting, maybe even useful. If not, oh well, it was worth a try. Um, I've enjoyed uh, exploring these old gates that uh, I've got knocking around in my uh, surplus component uh, trays. There are one or two other chips which uh, may be worth a look at that are a little bit uh, different to conventional gates. So what I need to do is see if uh, these chips are still uh, working okay and then if they are I'll hopefully produce uh, another video. In the meantime um, thanks very much for watching. If you've um, enjoyed it then please consider subscribing and liking that really helps the channel. And if you're in the market for a multimeter, perhaps you consider the Kiwitz meters. You'll find uh, links in the description. You'll also find a code. If you use that code, you get a discount. That also helps the channel. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks very much for watching. See you on the next video.